Hello there everyone and welcome back to more Imperial Navy multiplayer or at least my attempt to get to the legendary ranking with Imperial Navy and the past few episodes have been a little bit rough but I hope at the very least they were still very tense and very entertaining matches to watch because we may have more of that down the road as first off we're going to be face off against was it Avenger uh, Grand Cruiser type of Imperial Navy fleet? With an exorcist serving as their flagship. So we are getting very similar type of fleet compositions here and I am utilizing my 6 cruiser fleet this time around. And it is not the 6 tire fleet as what you are probably used to seeing. In this case, I am going to be playing with the fleet I had done before. With two overlords, the dictator serving as the flagship in the middle there. And then three tires to kind of serve for the extra raw firepower. In theory, this should have a lot of close range punch on top of the sheer amount of torpedoes I have to utilize. It just comes down to if I have the window and opportunity to take full advantage of said torpedoes since they're probably going to be very pre prevalent for this matchup. Also I am kind of starting to suffer from the early symptoms of a cold so I apologize if my commentary is the, like I have a little... What am I trying to say? My commentary is a little bit degraded. Since the sort of irritation is starting to get to me. But like I said, it's going to be Grand Cruisers. I believe these are all Avengers with the Exorcist hidden somewhere. Since normally... I, okay, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it's a handful of frigates as well. Because I was going to say, normally you are able to get away with six Avengers... Although I think the consequence of that is you don't have enough points to get any frigates of any kind. So it's an incredibly top heavy type of fleet, but an inc incredibly dangerous one if it can get in close with the armor piercing ammo. And sadly, my fleet kind of uh, encourages getting in close to maximize my damage potential. But thankfully, I do have the overlords, the lances, to at least do a little bit of chipping damage in range. And all the tyrants themselves do have at least half their macro batteries, able to shoot at maximum range as well. Course engaged. So there is possibility to maybe soften up their fleet, since I'm just doing the traditional rattle grab in the closest objective near me, the enemy has and looking for opportunities area. to maybe push into the middle of the map. But as it stands, I don't want to get in close to that fleet if I can help it, at least Underway. until I get some kind of advantage going for me which hopefully will result in a lot of damage early on before the armor piercing ammo starts to take effect. Since even then with the tyrants and the overlords, my macro cannon damage potential is probably pretty close to the Avengers. They're definitely not comparable, but it should be enough that I shouldn't be at a disadvantage here. Not a significant one when you combine the fact that I have the A3 armor on the prow and the torpedoes. The only main downside, and uh, there's the frigates right there I mentioned, there's like three or four of them. But the main downside to this uh, fleet going with the overlords is I only got two Cobras to serve as my spotters. Two very fragile but incredibly mobile Cobras that can roam around, harass, and maybe steal points in the background if Fission is not needed. And now, we have Fissial. I have a frigate nearby to kind of deny them the gas cloud. For the worst case situation. I'm just going to have to get ready. Yeah, I don't have all my ships hitting the same targets. The only downside there. But that should change in a moment here as my opponents boost in. Stasis Bomb's going to pin them in place for a time being. And this is going to work out nicely, I want to believe, for me because take a look at all these macro cans that I'm now getting shots on with the lock on benefit. And hell, it's going to be kind of fun to see how these macro cans stack up. Since the Avenger is currently stuck in the stasis bomb, so all these projectiles are getting slowed down. And if, to if there's enough of them, they're all going to just, just hammer this Avenger just as the stasis bomb expires, but. Sadly, it didn't work out that way. I was hoping to see one big massive burst of damage on that thing. It's not a terrible start, though. 400 points of damage, and they're only just now getting through my shields. 
and most of that was due to the disruption bomb. So sadly, yeah, I'm trying to understand my thought process there because the torpedoes should have been planned for the one crippled Avenger. But the Rammy's doing good hits, and we got nice melted torpedoes on the flagship, which sadly burns our repair, but I'm in the perfect position to maybe capitalize on that. And that's what these two cruisers and are ideally going to be for. And ideally the front one was supposed to do the same, but it didn't get quite the window I wanted. Now, here's me trying to get another melt of salvo in. Full salvo in there, but my own formation is kind of hindering me a bit, and I think I'm burning too much of my combustion gauge too, to really kind of force my engagement on the flagship. Since right now, the damage is getting pretty spread out. I would love to either take out the flagship, or the one cruiser on the far right that's already crippled from earlier. Both of these would have lasting damage for me. And never mind the amount of damage that would be denied to them if I can manage it. It's a little bit slower, I would have liked to get a little more aggressive here. I think Combustion Cage may have been burnt a little bit too much to my liking. And sadly, Stasis Bomb is just out enough that it slows down my flagship trying to ram theirs. And sadly, without a rally for my flagship, it's going to mute me on out. So there is going to be a bit of attrition damage now. A lot of it because the damage on my end is definitely getting spread out. It's amazing damage at that, but I don't need to tell you when these Avengers do the same boarding damage as battleships. How important it is to mitigate that potential? And let's see. Oh, they're down to two Grand Cruisers, one of which is going to mutiny from the fires alone, I'm almost certain. But it's pretty fragile right now. Since the flagship just dies as a result of that. And I don't. Well, actually, I can execute the crew there, but I don't think I used summary execution, which probably would have been really important there. At least, a good way to help protect me from that deck destruction I just suffered. Since keep in mind, losing that deck, that permit destruction, just permanently cuts my morale in half. And it's what's prompting me to lose all my cruisers, just because I did not do that uh, summary execution to get my crew back in line. Since otherwise, this could have been a win right now. As it stands, I have only the two Cobras which don't have enough damage potential. Just very minor things and the damage being spread out cost me immensely. And again, I feel like maybe I could have been a little more forward I, with my rushing on the flagship especially. Since I had, my, I had two of my cruisers in the back door and... I should have been able to very easily get follow-up torpedoes on that flagship. And the morale damage would have been substantial, especially so early on with the melted torpedoes. The damage was really damn good for me. And hell, most of my fleet in initially has been defeated mainly because of the morale and I did not take it as seriously as I probably should have, dang it. And as a result, I'm going to concede this match. It was down to the wire, but I know what mistakes I made on top of maybe not being more aggressive with the torpedoes. Okay, this might be a treat of a match for you, depending on how you feel about Drukari in general. For we're facing off against, was it, at least three carrier type of battleships? Maybe two impalers and a carrier ship. It's hard to really remember if I'm completely honest with this matchup. But at the same time, it's the same kind of Drukari fleet that you're used to. Three battleships that are going to be roaming around harassing me. And I'm going to be needing to be on point about grabbing or at least denying their boarding and bombers. To at least give me that longevity necessary. Since with me almost never being able to see where they are outside of a good scanner pulse or when they engage me. I am going to have a hard time writing them down. Thankfully though, my plan for how I'm going to engage this match 
is I'm going to try and grab these two points directly in front of my cruisers, then slowly but surely make my way to those three points there and try and fortify and secure them. The only thing that I'm curious about, well, this sounds good on paper just because of the placement of those three objectives. What I'm thinking about for future matchups is how can I learn from this for if the objectives are spread out? Because let's admit it, this is more of a lucky placement for me because if I have all my cruisers in the middle, I have very easy opportunity to chase, run them down on the objective, if not just retake it if they're bold enough to try and steal it from me. On top of the possibility of torpedoes, macro cans to just get that lasting damage and ideally some really good critical hit chances, if I'm so lucky. And I remember at the last second that I want my beacon, which honestly I don't expect it to do a lot. I'm hoping it serves as a little bit of area denial, which, which is almost what I always want to have the beacon for. It gives me that bit of insurance that my opponent will not be wanting to go a certain direction. And even if they do, I can be farther away and it gives me more time to respond to it. So there is benefit in the defensive sense, just not realistically revealing them so I can get aggressive though. And this is the reveal, one frigate, three battleships, so I'm inclined to believe that it's at least two carrier ships, maybe one impaler, or just three carrier ships in general. I know the basic carrier ships with the bombers as well as the boring ships are the most expensive of the battleships. I just couldn't tell you if Drukari are able to afford all three of them and a frigate at the same time. And since stealth and map awareness is going to be so important, I may keep the commentary down low, just or at least keep it down a little more than usual. So you can at least hear the audio cues that I'm hearing to help dictate my playstyle. And here comes the first boarding party. This is why I love having a dictator in this fleet. I don't quite have the brace for impact, but with the point defense and the fires to stall, I'm hoping I can deal with these fires incredibly quickly. Keep in mind, Eldari fighters have 70% was it 70% chance to avoid point defense damage when they're hit, versus my 60%. And you're gonna see how that takes effect here, cause my fighters are almost gone, and that would be nearly a fatal for the boring damage I could have just took there. Maximum burn. But thankfully I cleared them out and best of all I get to retain the charge of fighters for later on. And there's the indication of two more of the battleships. Thankfully I do get indication of where they are, which helps justify a tiny bit my maneuver up here, especially with the beacon as well. I'm at least relatively safe directly to the left and when I make my motion towards those three objectives that they have. Ship ready. But once again, I'm prepared for the fighters and they're smart enough to recall them this time after at least losing one charge of their fighters. It's more the fighters I'm more concerned about because the dictator can almost single-handedly deal with any boarding and bombers so long as there's no fighters to support or deny me. And seeing where those uh, impalers or fighters return gives me more indication that there's several of them back there. And I get the convenient Emperor's Tarot to at least spot this one battleship that's gone AWOL. I don't know if that's all three of them or if the two battleships separate though, that's the only thing I'm uncertain of. But it's the flagship and I want to do what damage I can. It's just really hard to hit with macro cannons, even with a battleship at that range. Just because of how easily they can reposition. So, my opponent's engaging on me. Fighters are screening. They're going to intercept both these pretty well. But as soon as the shields go down, my battleship loses. Loses its engines, which is a little unfortunate. I'm just trying to pay attention. Do I have repairs available or was I just oblivious to this? I don't know. I'm trying to... It is getting bored right now. That's all I can tell you. So I think my fighters may have got shot down. 
Either way, two cruisers are trying to hunt this thing down and with some re-execution. I have a good opportunity for it too. I just barely miss out on the ram attempt though. But thankfully, with two well executed uh, torpedoes, or not, with two executed uh, frigates, I can keep this thing visible. I just need to recharge my combustion gauge is the problem. So as much as I would love to keep running them down, it's going to be tricky with my gauge already half spent, with me waiting on the cooldown of summary execution. Never mind these bombers that are also coming. And if you hadn't noticed, because I haven't repaired the engines on the Dictator, it is currently now permanently down. So the, the Dictator is going to have a hard time positioning and being able to keep itself safe. Although it's still going to be in the fight. I am going to tell you that much. The flagship is marked again. I'm going to have those cruisers try intercept. And I'm hoping these two cruisers can single-handedly take out that battleship for me. At least keep it out of the fight. Since Drukhari rely heavily on being able to focus all their ships on a single target. So ideally, me splitting a third of my firepower for a third there should be better for me. Should be. Just because of the rechargeable health on my shields. If I can manage that well. Otherwise, I do miss out on my fighters though. And that scares me for this bomber or boarding attempt that's about to come. It forces me to slow down as a result. I do take boarding damage, but... That isn't quite going to kill a third of my crew just yet. And I miss... I mess up on the scanner pulse. Which is going to prompt me to disengage that battleship and follow up with what my original plan was, which is to secure these three points. I may seem like I have three, I'm 300 points behind, but once I grab this third point lease, I'm going to start reducing that deficit. I'm going to start catching up at the very least. And ideally, if I'm fast enough to grab these other two points, then that just drastically turns my favor and hopefully forces the Chukari to actually come at me. At least try to fight me more. But sadly, I missed out on a really good opportunity there to try and run down that one battleship. That would have been amazing since I believe in this matchup. If you can at least take out one of the battleships, the Chukari is so crippled that unless they already did significant enough damage to you, they're probably going to fall apart if you can keep your posture and cool. And there's the frigate right there. Just left AWOL. We got indication of fighters down below. And I do have dictators in prepared for us. Or I have the fighters on the dictator. I'm just not going to launch them because there's no point. It's only fighters after all. Meanwhile, more fighters are coming from behind. Again, not worry about just the fighters. It's basically a free kill for me. And another reason why splitting them up, defying their firepower, especially against this kind of fleet, helps me so much. Because now I'm not really threatened by these fighters until they throw something else from their fighter bays at me. I'm just having a hard time writing them down, of course. But again, Beacon serves as area denial. My dictator should be completely safe for a time being until they force an engagement. Especially with these frigates here, but one sadly is going to get killed because I accidentally rammed it slightly. And this other frigate is going to be stuck in that, uh, I forget, what is it? Void matter cannon? I forget what the ability is called. It's going to be stuck in there a little longer than I like. I actually thought it was outside of the radius, so... Half its health is already brought down. Otherwise, I hear boosting down below. As far as I can recall, there's at least maybe two ships down below. No, just the one battleship, actually. The one that's probably engaged me now was the one that I ran down earlier. And there should be a third battleship up somewhere near that final point. And keep in mind, I have four objectives right now. Okay, there's the third battleship. So now suddenly, 
That lead that Drukari had doesn't look so significant anymore. It's just a shame how quickly they can grab those objectives because they're, they have three battleships, though. Yeah, with that reveal of the third battleship, I should just immediately boost on this third point. Hell, I think I... Yeah, I actually already do it. Okay. I was a little concerned I did not know that. That I did not take advantage of that, because... Then that dr drastically reduces the time where I can grab this fourth point. Or at least this final point for Changing this defensive course. form. What is it? Defensive position I want. Your orders? And Underway. once this point's neutralized, I am going to be really damn close to 150 point deficit. Burn retros. Which I will be able to recover from. We serve. Hell, they currently only have a single point, Ready which the battleship's there now. That's easily going to be corrected. But now. I don't feel as much pressure. It's just a matter of making sure my cruisers don't get picked off again by like multiple battleships at once. And I'm actually going to demonstrate why a single battleship may not be terrifying in such a defensive position. The only thing, the only problem of course is I have no idea where they're at. And this is where I'm going to be trying to keep quiet or keep the commentary to a minimum. So you can kind of hear what I'm hearing to a vague extent. The beacon for one gives away where the flagship is. Despite my attempts to conceal these ships, that's still useful intel for me. I just don't know which direction it's going. And let's see, this one cruiser is isolated, but it's getting ready to maneuver out of the way. And these other ships are going to try support, because here's something interesting. I am at maximum range of these guns right now, so watch as they basically fizzle out because I'm flying outside their maximum range. And I take almost no damage even though that should in theory be free damage for my Drakari opponent. And they just boosted away because of that maneuver too. I do regret doing that scanner pulse though. I was paranoid maybe they would try and snipe my frigate down since it was briefly revealed. We wait your command. And, it's only, and it's the only frigate I have available, so... In retrospect, I believe I used that to kind of keep it safe. Your orders? Since it is probably my most important point. Underway. And I heard a scanner pulse from their frigate as we well. Serve. So I know that's also burnt, so my frigate should be all but safe. Engaging and this beacon engines. here is again, a little bit area denial. I want to try and pressure the top and right side a little bit more. Understood. And this beacon, hopefully, will give me that uh, confidence that they can't just steal this point from me without me knowing about it. That's the idea anyway. I do again have my fleet spread out in groups of three, which can be burdensome. But I do see the one battleship here. The only problem again, as I hint at with the Dictator, it is vulnerable to getting taking severe damage right now since it doesn't have that convenience of just running away so I'm gonna be forced to take some of these hits but again dictator is so invaluable for this kind of situation it is about to suffer heavy uh, troop damage though from the consistent boarding though and this is a situation where I probably should have been more aggressive trying to build up or at least keep its troop count high but it already lost his engine so that's a lower priority I would argue Setting course. now I have the lead I am almost 100 points ahead of them I feel uncomfortable it's just I wish I could be doing more with two frigates maybe I could get a little more bold but that was my own undoing, really, for why I lost that first frigate. So I could feel more comfortable getting aggressive. Since I certainly need to at least hold on to a scanner pulse for when they do this aggressive maneuver. Since now I kind of have almost nowhere to really go. Until I detect them by some means. Summary execution is burnt. Scanner pulse is activated. So now I have that window. 
It's just a question, can I do the damage necessary? Since it ain't used to boost yet. We wait your command. Only one torpedo hit, sadly. And I'm going to be suffering very severe troop damage Ship in a ready. brief moment. Understood. But hopefully with their abilities Burn movement racers. spent, I can at least soften this your up a little bit more. Again, I would love nothing more than to get engine critical hits to really cripple them. But due to the battleship's Ship resilience... Ready. That's a tall order. Now this is another example where I just evade and greatly minimize a lot of this damage. Although the asteroid belt is going to be helping in this regard since I am going to suffer engine damage here. After just doing a repair earlier I believe was what happened there. So I fall back with the asteroid belt to kind of protect it. It can repair that damage, it's just going to be a while before I can at least do that. And again, beacons protecting my left side. So, I'm confident nothing bad could happen to that third point while I'm way over here. I'm just wary of this frigate. And my opponent's going to be eyeing for as well pretty damn soon. I'm pre I'm getting the suspic sneaking suspicion. And more we fighters were just launched. I'm pretty certain I heard them, and there they are. So this prompts the Dictator flight. yet again to protect me. We serve. Even though it's crippled, it is doing so much Heading for me. With the way this fleet's built. All ahead full. And as you can see, I am taking very little damage to these harassments, but... Again, it's only one battleship. If I can't aggressively reveal them to I make roll. them not get the engagement they want, then this would be almost a perfect position for me. Maybe not a very exciting one, since after all there's not a lot of combat going on. Now, they are going to dive in. I sadly did recall my fighters at a very bad time. So this dictator is about to take a massive beating and get destroyed as a result. Which is unfortunate, because the bombers are what did that damage there. And in that distraction, I think two battleships just hit me there briefly, or at least... Looks like it was just the flagship, I suppose. Trying to cripple me. And this frigate is now going to try and run down my Cobra. We are down to 200 points until this game's decided. Nearly 90 seconds about. Until this game is over. And sadly, I did not burn retros in time, so the frigate gets picked off due to the asteroid belt itself. But now, what is it? A hundred points. A hundred and fifty points. And now, my opponent is aggressively diving me here. I have the detection of the flagship. I just don't have the rest of the fleet here to support at the moment. Due to my distraction with trying to pick off their frigate. But the torpedoes strike, they strike really good, prompts the repair sadly, so I kind of wish those were the regular damage torpedoes. Now another 30 seconds and this will be over in one way or the other. So I want to at least scare them off and keep this thing alive. I have brace for impact, that should help a ton, but the bombers are also doing a lot of damage. It's almost the bombers alone that are carrying them right now. And with the cruiser gone, they just barely take the lead by 20 points. And sadly, I lose by what? Two, three seconds? And the Cobra alone is probably what cost me there. If that had just stopped before the asteroid belt, it would have probably been completely avoided, and I would have won just by those 30 points. Alright. Now, finally, I get an opportunity to maybe play around with against the Tau, at least with the 6th Cruiser Fleet, for I honestly feel like this has so much more potential against Tau, mainly because the Apocalypse is not serving as a bit of a liability, with its lack of heavy firepower against the armor, and of course not being really vulnerable to the dang Seeker missiles, which can be a bit problematic. Although, my opponent is not going to be utilizing the 6th Cruiser Fleet, that's a little unfortunate, but I have actually succeeded 
to some extent against the six crews of fleet in some test uh, battles that were unfortunately not recorded. I kind of wish I had, but town matchups seem pretty rare, surprisingly, despite how I feel they can be so simple to get victory with when you utilize at least the six cruiser fleet. Since the fighters can be incredibly overwhelming, the only downside to maybe the six cruiser fleet is that it's very easy to kill off each individual squad of fighters because, keep in mind, there's only, what, 12 fighters to kind of screen for each squadron? As opposed to kind of what you see with the battleship and hell, even the custodian would be the utter extreme in that matter, where all those hit points can easily get spread out and have a lot better longevity, let alone better effectiveness, especially when facing off against other fighters like my dictator. But this opponent seems to be less uh, skilled as they are not utilizing their stances, so in truth, it is kind of a nice break to have something that's not super intense. I did have other matches record as well, but sadly, latency made that kind of unbearable for me to even play in, never mind the fact that it probably would be a terrible experience to watch with me having like a hundred millisecond ping. But otherwise, oh, excuse me. Again, the cold's starting to get to me, or at least the irritation. But anyways, we are dealing with what? Uh, three, four uh, cruisers, a custodian, and maybe a light cruiser. It's either three cruisers, a light cruiser and custodian, or just a custodian and four cruisers. And I can't quite recall off the top of my head there, but... Tau, especially the protector Tau, is really damn simple. They just have to fly towards you and ideally get their seeker missiles and bombers to connect. Although, there is of course more to it. As I kind of demonstrated a little bit when I rarely play town myself. You kind of want to play a matador, especially against like uh, the Imperial Navy with the threat of their torpedoes and their ramming spurs. In theory, town should be able to just win a macro cam fight, especially if I have my broadside facing to him and tr with this fleet. So I want my torpedoes and ramming to hit. And with their high agility and slightly higher speed with upgrades, they can effectively avoid that. It's just a matter of if I can force them to burn the combustion gauge in a wasteful manner. But I saw the fighters launching. This kind of prompted to maybe do some torpedo damage since I have been honestly doing a terrible job of that. I admit it, it may have cost me more of those battles than I care to admit. And surprisingly, I wasn't expecting them to hit a frigate of all things, let alone multiple times. So that may not have been as effective as I like, and this is where a little bit of the experience probably kicks in for my opponent. They did launch fighters, but they were isolated due to not kind of getting fission. And the Seeker Missiles are actually relatively simple enough to kind of dodge. It's just a matter of do dodging them long enough for the fighters to get shot down. So that's kind of why I think six cruisers with the Dictator back up helps a lot. Especially if I use a Stasis Bomb properly too. But my opponent's trying to boost away, I missed the Torpedo shot sadly. And I'm going to try to somehow run them down. Because sure, I said Tao had better macro weaponry, but not when they're trying to run away from me here now. So I like to think this is a good position for me. A bit of terrible control of my frigate, I will say. But with all that maneuver spent, I think my opponent's getting close to running out of combustion gauge. And these broadside kind of rear ramming attempts do work incredibly quickly, I gotta say. I'm a little bit shocked by that, if I were to be honest. Because I'm used to Tau being a little more resilient just because of the ACV armor they have on the prow. Which is kind of what you're normally taking or having to go up against. And apparently it's showing here. A very simplistic type of battle. But I have played against the six cruiser fleet to, and got success. I like to sink anyway. And 
This is a nice refresher for me to kind of reset after those two videos of hard losses and really tense battles. So, I'm hoping for the weekend we can get back to the series battles. I'll do a couple more videos with this fleet. And maybe, depending how we do, I will seriously consider moving on to another faction and going back to my us usual type of videos as well. Because doing this commentary after a match is definitely a different type of take. And I like to think it works really well for when the championship series of, of Armada 1 was uh, going on. But this is just random uh, quick matches essentially. It doesn't have that same significance or weight to it. I won't argue anyway. Either way, maybe this losing streak can be put behind me now. Hopefully. Because I really do like this fleet. It's just a lot of nuances to figure out.